During the Warring States era of feudal Japanese history, where warring clans fought against each other for supremacy, a new weapon emerged that would revolutionise warfare, the matchlock gun, otherwise known as the teppo or hinawaju. These firearms forever changed the tactics employed by the samurai. In this video, we will delve into the world of matchlock gunnery, exploring its origins, the techniques employed by the samurai, and the impact it had on the battlefield both during and after the Warring States era. Matchlock firearms first arrived in Japan in the year 1543, when two Portuguese traders, Antonio da Mota and Francisco Zemoto, arrived on the island of Tanakashima as they were sheltering from the storm. Making landfall on the island, these two adventurers, along with their crew from Portuguese Goa, used matchlock firearms to replenish their supplies by hunting for some of the local wildlife. Intrigued and impressed by these firearms, the 15-year-old daimyo of the island, Tanagashima Tokitaka, purchased two of the firearms and then set his swordsmiths and metalsmiths about trying to recreate them. Despite some initial difficulties, this young daimyo and his clan were eventually able to replicate the guns that they had purchased, and this is why they are sometimes referred to as Tanegashima. The Japanese were already familiar with gunpowder weaponry and had been using basic Chinese originated guns and cannons, known as teppo, for around 270 years before the arrival of the Portuguese adventurers. They already knew how to make and use gunpowder both as an explosive and as a propellant. But these early simple guns were sometimes dangerous and often very difficult to use effectively in battle. These new firearms from Tanegashima featured a spring-loaded firing mechanism which was externally mounted on the gun and it made it a lot easier to use the guns were much lighter, they were easier to use, and because they could be fired with two hands, they were now a lot more accurate than the previous Teppel. A simple hemp rope coated in potassium nitrate acted as the ignition source. And this proved to be a lot more reliable than the wick that was held to the open firing aperture of the previous type of firearm. These new types of firearms were a lot more complex than their predecessors. And those samurai and soldiers who were destined to become gunners would not only have to learn about the mechanism and the engineering of the weapon, they would also have to learn about its application on the battlefield. It is for this reason that the martial art known as Hojutsu, or the way of the gun, was created. It formalized a system for training both the soldiers and the samurai in the way of Japanese artillery. In many instances, firearms were more simple to use and required less strength than, for example, the spear or yari, and less skill than the bow, which could take many years to master. However, this point of view overlooks the fact that a soldier is not required simply just to fight. By equipping these soldiers with these easier to use weapons, which were a lot more effective and powerful than anything that had been previously used before, soldiers were becoming more and more effective. Once trained in their combat skills, they were also able to apply their labours to other skills that were necessary for soldiers during the feudal era. For example, an army on the move would need to be able to reap its own rice fields, it would need to be able to patrol, set up secure areas. A soldier would be able to guard a location. They would be expected to conduct inspections of the civilian population whilst on patrol. And they would also have to conduct reconnaissance to locate the enemy and they may also be deployed to garrison duties, policing areas.
As with modern firearms, weapons can be defined by their battlefield role and their size. And although there are many types of Hinawaju, or matchlock gun, we will now look at some of the most common types found today. Okay. Tanzutsu are matchlock pistols, and they can be fired with one hand, allowing the other hand to be free okay. to control a horse or to wield another weapon. Okay. Most often seen in the hands of the Ashigaru, or the infantry, Banzutsu were the most numerable kinds of gun on the battlefield, and were stockpiled when not at war. Zamazutsu were long barreled guns and they were designed to be fired from defensive positions, such as within castles, ships, or pre prepared trenches. The length of the gun made it difficult for a single gunner to load it, so they were often crewed up with two men one to shoot the gun, and one to load it and prepare the gunner. The longer barrel and thicker gun breech meant that a stronger charge could be put inside the gun. This increased the range of the shot being fired, making it ideal for harassing enemy as they advanced. However, as the barrels were not rifled, as the projectile lost its velocity, so too the accuracy diminished. Normally found in the hands of the samurai, samurai zutsu and chuzutsu were large caliber guns carried by individual soldiers. Often they were custom made for the only people in society who could afford to have these kinds of weapons, the samurai. Known as Ozutsu, these large caliber guns were basically cannons that were carried by the samurai to take on the most difficult targets, such as gates, cavalry, and structures. <laughs> there were also other types of guns, such as the Bajozutsu, which was a carbine carried by samurai on horseback, or the Torizutsu, which was designed for hunting birds. All of these guns had their own separate names, but were less familiar than the ones we have just examined. Gunners would often operate under the control of a gun captain, who would tell them where their targets were and how to fire. A full volley was known as a guider. <laughs> Firing in sequence is known as shoring. Oh, 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 oh. 
This term has also applied to those who shot independently, such as samurai gunners or those using zamazutsu from independent positions. Those operating without a gun captain, such as the samurai gunners, could select their own targets and would often fire quicker than those in the Ashigaru. Within 30 years of the introduction to the Samurai battlefield, firearms have become the dominant weapon. え、え、even now, all this time after the end of the samurai era, the legacy of Japanese gunnery is portrayed in many art forms. Not only is samurai gunnery represented in traditional art forms such as paintings, but also in modern art forms such as dramas, television shows and movies. Outside of Japan, however, there is the ongoing notion that sometimes the samurai saw firearms as a dishonourable weapon, but this is simply not the case. We know from vast historical records that it was the samurai that introduced the firearms into Japan, and we know it was the samurai that ordered tens of thousands of guns into production, possibly hundreds of thousands, and in addition, it was the samurai who trained their infantry in the way of the gun, whilst leading them and setting a good example with their own gun. It is for this reason, and for this martial prowess, that the Hinawaju is still celebrated in Japan. As of 2023, firearms of this nature have existed in Japan for 480 years. Kojutsu, or the art of gunnery, is one of the oldest martial arts still practiced in Japan. And within the country, there are many gun groups, like the Matsumoto Castle Gun Corps, who practice gunnery even now. 
Using firearms that were constructed during the feudal era and feudal era tactics, many of these gun groups put on displays regularly around Japan at castles and gunnery celebrations and martial arts demonstrations. Towards the end of the feudal era, the Japanese government decided it was time to make a corps of infantry to replace the traditional warriors that had protected Japan for so long. This change in societal structure led to rebellions and insurrection. Those who opposed change sided with the shogun or the military ruler of Japan. Those who embraced it sided with the emperor and the creation of a new imperial army. By the time of the mid and late 1800s, the need for the traditional protectors of Japan had all but diminished, and the new need was for a professional army. I hope you enjoyed this summary of matchlock gunnery in Japan, and if you did enjoy it, you can look us up on gunsamurai.com, and don't forget to like and subscribe for any future updates.